It is a new year of fall high school sports, and it's a whole new season of the Scoreboard Show. For the next 11 weeks, we're going to take you around Central and Western Kansas to various high school sporting events in golf, tennis, soccer, cross country, volleyball, and football. Tonight, we kick off week one, and it's all coming up next. Presentation of Scoreboard Show on Smoky Hills Public Television is brought to you in part by an underwriting grant from From Rural Telephone and Next Tech, providing the region with telephone, internet, cable television, and wireless phone solutions, Rural Telephone and Next Tech proudly support public broadcasting and all ventures dedicated to improving Kansas communities. The T Bird Stream It, the sky is the limit, cloud is right along your way. To your dream career, come and see, 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 get on your way to what you want to be, Cloud County Community College, going anywhere starts here. Dove Chevrolet Buick Cadillac, providing sales, service, and genuine GM parts to the Golden Belt since 1957. Located at 4217 West 10th, right next to Brown's in Great Bend. Come see us. Welcome to the Scoreboard Show. I'm Troy Waymaster. Later in the show, Casey McAvoy will be in with all the football action from tonight. But first, since we are the Scoreboard Show, let's take a look at the scoreboard results from tonight's football action. scores from tonight's football action and we'll have highlights from some of those games coming up later in the show. If you attended your game tonight and didn't see your score, please give us a call with the score. Let's get started this week with golf action from earlier this week. Girls Golf on the Scoreboard Show is brought to you in part by Dune and Peterbilt is a full line dealer with a great lineup of new and used Peterbilt trucks. And there are some new but familiar faces in our service department. Dune and Peterbilt GMC, located at Highway 156 and 56, east of Great Bend. 
On Monday, the Hayes High Lady Indians hosted the season opening invitational golf tournament at Smoky Hill Country Club. Facing the hot temperatures, the nine teams participating were Dodge City, Garden City, Great Bend, Hutchison, Liberal, TMP Marion, and the host, Lady Indians. Garden City swept the top three medals and took home the team title with a 162, 28 strokes ahead of the runner-up, Hayes High. Mackenzie Thayer was the overall winner by shooting a 5-under par, 32, which ties the course record for nine holes at Smoky Hill. Lady Buffs teammates Abby Campbell finished second with a 39, and Abby Shaddix took third with a 40. Hayes High's Holly Hatton shot a 43 with, for fourth. Alyssa Kim of Salinas Central was fifth with a 45. Take a look at this putt by Lady Indians' Casey Bileman from the edge of the green, a long distance, and yes, it's good. Casey finished sixth with a 46. Hutchison had the next two places with Kara Copeland in seventh place with a 47 and Danica Tomlin at 48. Michaela Nixon of Solana South shot at 48, placing ninth, and Maddie Curry of Hayes High made the top 10 with a 50. Overall team scores were Garden City in first, Hayes High second, Hutchison third, followed by Solana South, Solana Central, Dodge City, TMP Marion, and Liberal. Now we head to Hugoton for other golf action. The pros think that it is windy with five to 10 mile per hour winds, but look at those trees in the backgrounds for these ladies trying to play nine holes. But it would not stop Kaylee Keck of Colby, as on the first hole out, she birdies the hole. This would help put her in first place of the tournament as she shot a 42 on the day. Second place was won by her teammate, Carly Chris, with a 44. Third and fourth places went to Ulysses golfers as Larissa Sager and Maggie Coops came in with a 46. Fifth place was won by Syracuse's Stephanie Guyon, who shot a 47. Sublette's Caitlin Marlin also came in with a 47 for her sixth place victory. With one more stroke on the day, it was Jazz Weiss of Goodland in seven. Holcomb's Erica Robinson rounded out her nine with a score of 49 in eighth place. Then shooting a 50, it was Syracuse golfers Allie Newbrandt and Madison Brown taking ninth and 10 places. In team action, it was Colby taking third place, Ulysses winning second, and Syracuse in first, with four golfers placing in the top 11. That wraps up golf coverage for this week. The scoreboard show traveled to Kingman last Saturday for the Central Kansas League preseason volleyball tournament. Teams participating included Pratt, Nickerson, Heston, Haven, Halstead, Hillsboro, Lions, Smoky Valley, Sterling, and of course the host Kingman Eagles. Pool play began the day at the high school and middle school on four courts. First, we catch up with Pool B action featuring the Nickerson Panthers taking on the Lions from Lions. Nickerson starts the first set dominating the Lions. The Lions come roaring back to even the score. Despite the comeback, the Panthers get the win 27 to 25. The Panthers keep the momentum and take the second set 25 to 21. In Pool A, we see the Dragons of Halstead versus the Black Bears of Sterling. Halstead didn't allow the score to be close and wins the match 25 to 17 and 25 to 10. Now we see the Vikings of Smoky Valley facing the Swathers of Heston in Pool B action. It was back and forth in the scoreboard in the first set as Smoky Valley comes out on top 25 to 22. In the second set, the Vikings shut down the Swathers and win 25-14. In the championship bracket, Hillsborough defeated Heston and Pratt won over Smoky Valley. This sets up a rematch between the Vikings and the Swathers. Smoky Valley goes on to take third with wins over Heston 25-17 and 25-18. The Pratt Greenbacks win the CKL preseason championship by defeating Hillsborough. The Ellsworth Invitational Tennis Tournament on Tuesday began in the scorching heat for teams from Central Plains, Concordia, Ellenwood, Trinity Catholic, Lions, Smoky Valley, Trigo Community, and the host, Ellsworth. Playing at the high school and Kryzik Park, number two singles was won by Allison Carr of Trigo Community. Concordia's Daniel Time was second. And Rachel Morales of Ellenwood took third.
Number two doubles winners were Gentry McClelland and Caitlin Robel of Ellenwood, and Smoky Valley's team of Emma Anderson and Emmy Schultz took second. Aubrey Kempke and Carly Beck of Central Plains finished in third. In number one doubles, Ellenwood's Derry Beckwith and Bailey Schartz took first, and Sammy Eshelman and Emma Flynn of Smoky Valley was second. Katie Hip and Janae Heckley of Central Plains took third. The number one singles champ was Smoky Valley's Jessica Van Rankin. Rachel Herzog of Ellsworth took second, and Ellenwood's Oma Thomas was third. Overall team scores were led by Ellenwood in first place, Smoky Valley in second, Treewood Community third, Central Plains fourth, Ellsworth fifth, Concordia took sixth, Lions was seventh, and Trinity Catholic was eighth. Last Monday, the Hayes High Indians hosted a Western Athletic Conference soccer match against the Garden City Buffaloes. Midway through the first period, Garden City senior Samuel Sanchez shoots one in the corner of the net to light up the scoreboard 1-0. This collision on a breakaway towards the goal sets up a free kick opportunity for Garden City's Diego Benitez. The shot works to perfection and the Buffaloes take a 2-0 lead going into halftime. To start the second period, Hayes High comes out more aggressive and senior Garrett Sander has a scoring opportunity, but his shot doesn't reach the goal. Indian senior goalie Hunter Wilkins comes out to defend, but the shot by Buffalo senior Juan Vicente reaches the net, making the score 3-0 in favor of Garden City. Hayes High's Jordan Winholds takes a shot, but it goes wide. Juan Vicente works his way past three Indian defenders and shoots in his second goal to make the score four to nil. In a fast fury of action, Hayes High goalie Hunter Wilkins blocks a shot by Garden City's Jose Moreno. Toby Dominguez takes the rebound and passes to Juan Vicente, who shoots in the hat trick for his third goal. With 24-58 left in the game, Hayes High finally prevents the shutout with the goal by senior Gustavo Reyes. The Indians have another chance to score, but it is well defended by the Garden City goalkeeper. Buffalo senior Toby Dominguez gets past the Indian defenders and shoots the ball into the corner of the net, making the score 6-1. Hayes High makes another goal late to make the final Garden City 6, Hayes High 2. On Thursday, Great Bend Panthers traveled to Liberal to take on the Redskins. It would not be even two minutes into the contest before Redskin Jose Gutierrez finds the back of the net off of an assist by Eduardo Moreno. But 10 minutes later, Great Bend would be answering back as Oscar Torres put in the goal to tie it up. The liberal duel of Moreno and Gutierrez come back at 21-36 as Moreno knocks it in for the goal. Liberal would not be done there as Gutierrez assists Christian Espinoza with the goal. Five minutes before the half, Moreno takes it in for the run for another goal to send Liberal up 4-1. The second half will be much of the same story. Great Ben's Oscar Torres comes out, shoots, rebounds, and knocks it in for the goal. But Eduardo Moreno would not be able to be stopped as he scores three more times in the second half, along with teammate Isaac Gutierrez with one. Great Bend would get on to score and towards the end of the contest as Enrique Guyton gets the goal, but it would not be enough as Liberal gets the win 8-3. Next week, both teams enter into tournament action at the Titan Classic. Prairie Dog Golf Course in Norton was the site for the Norton Invitational Cross Country Meet on Thursday. Varsity and Junior Varsity runners from Hill City, Hoxie, Grinnell, Phillipsburg, Stockton, Decatur Community, Trigo Community, Plainville, Northern Valley, and the host Norton faced the 100 degree plus heat to complete the race. The boys and girls JV ran together to start things off. Tanner Colbin of Hill City crossed the finish line first with a time of 21.30. Grant Wolf of Grinnell was second. Thatcher Brown of Ellis took third. Philip Rupp of Northern Valley was fourth, followed by teammate Macy Casson, which was fifth. 
The top junior varsity girl finisher was Philsburg Bethany Salida with a time of 25-11. The girls' varsity race was next. The top teams were Norton taking first place team honors, Decatur Community was second, Hill City third, and Plainville took fourth. Hill City's Leslie Van Lonen was first at 18.08. Marley McKenna of Hoxie took second, Darcy Bainter of Norton third, Cassidy Rathman of Plainville was fourth, Norton's Caitlin Engelbert took fifth, Taylor Tustin of Grinnell was sixth. The boys' varsity race was led throughout by top runner Brady Johnson of Plainville. His winning time of 17.33 was 40 seconds ahead of the next place. Gunnar Hayes of Northern Valley was second. Luke Fries of Hoxie took third. Tyler Shields of Decatur Community was fourth. Fifth place went to Norton's Zach Hartwell. Shane Jones of Hill City took sixth. Team totals had the host Norton Blue Jays taking the championship, Decatur Community was second, Phillipsburg was third, Plainville was fourth, and Stockton took fifth. Well, that time has come to take a short break, and Casey will be in with football action from tonight's games. Presentation of Scoreboard Show on Smoky Hills Public Television is brought to you in part by an underwriting grant from... Exhibit Customs does cars and trucks, wheels, tires, truck accessories, audio, video, subs and amps. It's not just the products they offer, it's the service behind the products. Get it tough, get it loud, get it mean, get it downright bad. Exhibit Customs, you're an individual, prove it. Football action on Scoreboard Show is brought to you in part by Simpson Farm Enterprises of Ransom, Hayes, Great Bend, and Beloit, your local spray coop and Apache dealer. We have highlights from the Hill City Foundation. However, it has been postponed to Monday night at 7 p.m. Blaine Raby under center for the Longhorns. Joel Struckoff, who struts off to the outside and cuts back to the middle with some nice spin moves and in for the score. Senior Dylan Anderson takes a snap and options to Adam Pfeiffer, who sticks his head down, makes a nice hit, and takes it down the near sideline, loses his footing, but after a 20-yard gain. Raby options right and pitches to Struck off down the field, who takes it even farther downfield before Anderson brings him down at the 20. Straight up the middle, says the Longhorns, and Struck off is barely touched, and he gets another six with some solid running. Anderson delayed handoff to Pfeiffer, who brings it outside and picks up a first, with Longhorns dragging his legs, finally tackled by Raby and Dakota Foreman. Adam to Pfeiffer, but nowhere to go as Zane Coleman brings him down in the backfield, and he's happy about that. Plainville and the Pittsburgh Panthers. Trevor Anders Axelson kicks it outside for a nice little gain, and the Cardinals are number one, baby. Becker rolls right, jumps, and throws it into triple coverage, picked off by Seth Dare, and he'll bring it back to the 30 before Axelson trips him up. Ross Coombs quarterbacks for the Panthers, toss left, number three, Matt Schneider, and pretty much tackles himself, but he can't keep his footing on the sideline. John Newman under center, reverse, reverse to Sheldon Brown, who picks up the first down, tackled by Andrew Casey, with a nice last name. Newland under center, play action, nice pass down the far sideline, and Seth there with the Panther TD. <laughs> Phillipsburg 21, Plainville 37 in Russell. The cheer squad hand springing down the track and ready for some football action. Nathan, Nathan Peterson fakes a handoff and has nowhere to go but run. Breaking tackles and dives into the end zone for sacks. Broncos ready to try to answer. Direct snap to Nash Cars. Second down on the two and nose diving in for the score. And a little jumping celebration. Peterson to pass. Runs left. 
still looking, and he heaves it up, and Mr. Touchdown Nash Karst gets a pick and a nice return. Broncos back to O with the big boy, Tyler Hunts taking the snap, gives it to Karst, who coughs it up. Peterson is there to recover for the Trojans. Peterson and his passing game take him to Clayton Kuhn down the far sideline on third and 10, and he gets it in. Southeast of Saline 50, and we go on to Trigo, where the sparkling pom-poms of Trigo Community High shine throughout as the Eagles take on the Eagles of Nest City. John Griffith takes a snap for Trigo, goes left for a few yards, is tackled by Matt Frank. Eagles, Eagles, it's a win-win cheer. Toss right to Cameron Staples, who gets a first and more. In fact, he'll score number 22 in for Trigo Community High. Colton Ratliff rolls right. The pass is up and caught by Drew Clark, but a nice tackle at the end by Devin Gum to save the TD. But the toss goes right, and Garrett Flax is in for the Nest City touchdown. Off to TMP at Hayes, where the Monarchs are at home against Ellenwood Eagles. And it gets a little wet out there. Ellenwood gives TMP no chance for offense right here. Nice hitting, boys. Flex those muscles, 52, we got that. A little rain and a nice catch and run for the Monarchs as they take the ball into Eagle territory. 15 cuts across the middle. Down the center field, finally tackled by Ellenwood at number one. Heading left and just shy of six. But no tricks, we'll take the points. The kick is good for TMP. On to our final game of the night, Victoria Knights and the Maxville Mustangs. Two teams that both finished seven and three have high hopes to go deeper into this year's postseason. Seth Filbert for the Stangs passes right to Adam Oak, brought down by Sam Otley after a 13-yard gain. Pass again, Oak makes a move and a diving sweet catch in the end zone for a Maxville touchdown. Yeah, that was nice. Victoria and quarterback Otley take the snap, give to Tanner Hobbs, and he picks up the first before Taylor Strandbarger can bring him down. Corey Dinkle now under center gives to the guy who used to be quarterback. Otley gets a nice gain up the near sideline before Tranberger knocks him out of bounds. And here we go, a bobbled snap for the Vikings, but they keep the ball and happen to cross over the goal line for a touchdown. How about that? And ladies and gentlemen, here's some more scores of tonight's area action. And I want to give a shout out to the people in Kinsley for the all school high school reunion. We'll see you in town this weekend.
presentation of Scoreboard Show on Smoky Hills Public Television is brought to you in part by an underwriting grant from... From Rural Telephone and Next Tech, providing the region with telephone, internet, cable television, and wireless phone solutions, Rural Telephone and Next Tech proudly support public broadcasting and all ventures dedicated to improving Kansas communities. The T-Bird stream it, the sky is the limit, cloud is right along your way to your dream career. Come and see, 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 get on your way to what you want to be, Cloud County Community College, going anywhere starts here. Dove Chevrolet Buick Cadillac. Providing sales, service, and genuine GM parts to the Golden Belt since 1957. Located at 4217 West 10th, right next to Brahms in Great Bend. Come see us. Well, that wraps up week one of the scoreboard show. Our cameras will be crisscrossing the state next week to bring you highlights of high school sports from throughout central and western Kansas. One of our featured football games next week will be a week one game that is being played tomorrow afternoon as Sedgwick travels to Hoisenden. That is just one event of many that we'll be showing next week on the scoreboard show. You can follow us on Twitter to find out more events that we'll be at. Until next time, remember to put on your game face, make up a sign, or just do anything to get the attention of our cameramen. And next time, we just might see you on the scoreboard show. Take care and good night. <laughs>